Hi, everybody. Thanks for um, getting together for this discussion. The title is During This Time, Ideas to Help Your Listing Sell. Uh, my name is Teresa Zamora, and I am in Coos Bay, Oregon, and I am an icon agent for a second time. Hey, I am Tracy Hunter. I'm over in Eastern Oregon in Hermiston, and I am a first time icon earner. Hi, everyone. I'm Sarah O'Reilly. I'm in the Portland area, uh, mainly Clackamas County, and I'm a first time icon. I'm Brian Simmons. I'm a first time icon from Southern Oregon, Medford Grants Pass area. Hi, I'm Jennifer Johnson. Sorry, I'm talking over somebody. This is, I'm Jennifer Johnston. I'm in Portland, Oregon. I'm a first time icon agent with EXP. And I'm Allie Puentes. I am in Salem, Oregon, and I am working on my third year as being an icon agent. You want to start off, start us off, Allie, or you want me to go ahead? Oh, okay. Yeah. So today we're just talking about things that can help us in um, in marketing our listings, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so recently, uh, just dealing with effects of the situation with COVID, um, I hosted a virtual open house and. Um, I think it was received well. There's obviously more than one way to host it, which is kind of what I got hung up on. Um, KV Core has a great platform to capture leads. Um, that being said, I think it kind of limits how many people actually showed up to, to see the house as we were live. Um, and then I also did it another way where it was just recorded where other people could go look at it. And of course, that way you don't really know how many or who or when people are looking at it. But definitely it allowed exposure for people to safely view the home. Um, and we got some pretty good feedback and the seller was happy that he didn't have to be out of the house for it. And were you answering questions during that? I mean, were you talking with people while you were doing it or were you, was it messaging? Yeah, so we did it on Easter weekend, I guess the Saturday before. So I did an Easter egg hunt. So I kind of kept people's attention throughout the house. I mean, obviously we wouldn't always do that, but um, most of the questions were people counting eggs. <laughs> um, but yeah, it. I did use... Um, a platform that allowed me to stream to Facebook and LinkedIn, uh, both my personal and my business Facebook page. Um, and then it allowed you to see questions as people were live. Obviously, it, I got a few questions afterwards, but um, yeah, I did answer questions as we were walking through. What platform was that that allowed you to do that? Um, Something yard. Uh, I know I wrote it down somewhere, but I don't know where I wrote it down. Yeah. Was it like Steam Yard or something like that? Yeah. Stream Stream Yard. Stream, stream Yard. Hmm. How did you promote that ahead of time? Uh, so within RMLS hour, RMLS WVMLS. Uh, it allowed you to put a virtual link in there. Usually they wouldn't allow that because it, you know, it's on our Facebook page, so it's branded. Uh, but during these times they were, they are allowing that to happen. So I created an event on the MLS and then my Facebook page. Um, if you follow the, there's a kind of a, a wizard through KV Core that you can use. Um, that allows you to set up a squeeze page um, and allows you to um, 
capture more leads that way. But like I said, I think it kept people from registering as well. I will say that I did this in 24 hours. So I think having it ahead of time would have been more, um, I probably would have gotten a better turnout. Uh, obviously, we were trying to adapt to things quickly at the beginning of April. What kind of turnout did you get, Allie? Um, I don't remember the numbers. There was probably, uh, not a ton, maybe a dozen people on live. Um, so I, I did it two different ways throughout the day. One of them was, like I said, uh, where they had to log in and I kept getting messages of people saying they didn't want to log in. Um, and then the second one was just live. So, um, like I said, I don't really know how many people have gone back and watched it after afterwards. So you still have it on your Facebook page. So in addition to it being live, you also recorded it. So then other people, so you can use it still in your listing, in your marketing, because you take it. Right. I did one that was, um, when the shutdown first happened, um, I created an event on Facebook and then did a Facebook Live. Um, I struggled with um, RMLS in that I uh, put a link in the remarks and RMLS and invited people to it. And arm, I got turned in, somebody turned me in and RMLS deleted it and said it was self-promotion. And I went round and round with them saying, well, open houses are self-promotion. We're, we're promoting the house and that we're the agent. Um, that's what we're doing. And I've got to get the word out there somehow that I'm doing this live open house and I need to invite people. So I got nowhere with RMLS. They stuck to their guns. But the nice part was, it um, somehow uh, did not get deleted out of Zillow's remarks. It stuck. And so people saw it there at least. Um, so, but I still didn't get a huge turnout or anything. And I did it for uh, about an hour and just walked around the house and talked the whole time and kind of talked with people. So that was the one, one time I, I did it. And that's, that's primarily what I've seen. I haven't done any personally. Um, I had somebody just ask me to go do a video tour of a home and I just did it off of my phone. Mm -hmm. but I've seen another agent um, who does open houses, you know, in the past regularly open houses. Our area in Eastern Oregon doesn't do very many open houses as realtors. So no. that's, and, and I think we're probably, you know, I think you guys do a lot of open houses up in the bigger areas, you know, Portland, Salem, things like that, where we really don't do open houses around here. Um, but there has been a couple of agents who've done open houses and I did see where she was doing them through Facebook and she really promoted them quite heavily for you know, reminders on all the different, um, making postings of, Hey, I'm doing a virtual open house on this date. And so she would put those into like a lot of the classified pages marketing up to that, you know, Sunday that she goes and does it type of a deal. And then her and a lender have been teaming up together and doing them that way. Hmm. That's the only way I've seen the virtual tour done in our area. So it's kind of interesting to hear how everybody's doing them in other cool. areas too. One of the things I did recently that was pretty well received was um, instead of a you know video walkthrough of of the house to do you know that type of an open house, I just did a slideshow with all the pictures um, from the photographer that that we had um, and put it using um, Adobe Spark, which is free, uh, and you put it a slideshow together and they put music to it and everything like that. And it turned out pretty good. Um, and then you could just upload that to Facebook um, or whatever, you know, social media. But I used Facebook, uploaded it, and then do a sponsored post um, targeted, you know, at whatever demographic you want or, or can with Facebook's uh, restrictions and everything there. But um, anyways, that was pretty well received and got, you know, quite a bit of engagement. 
um, and views and everything. And, and I think in my mind, at least primarily because it only took, uh, you know, a minute to run through the whole slideshow and then they could rewatch it, but it was saw, it was seen, um, several hundred times. So, um, anyways, it seemed to work out. All right. And did you put music to, to it, Brian? So it was kind of like a slideshow with music. Yeah, and that's all done through Adobe Spark. They just do it. Um, you could select from several different uh, music options, but they're all kind of preloaded on there and just, you know, instrumental, soft, guitar type stuff or, or whatever that, you know, kind of fits that type of uh, uh, marketing collateral. So it worked out pretty well. I, I'll do it again for sure. Mm -hmm. One thing that I'll add in, I was kind of panicking because I wasn't really sure what to, I had a class all Saturday morning, so I wasn't really sure how to best prepare. So I did a video and then um, I edited it. Like, so I put in a couple, um, there is some vacant, just open area on the side of the house. So I put in like a picture of garden boxes. So when I was walking, talking, I was live, but it was a video where I could kind of stop it. There was music, because that was the other thing. I didn't want to feel like I had to talk the whole time, because that's not typically how I show a house either. Um, and I, there was a picture of like garage shelving. You know, when you have a really high ceiling, you can mount the um, shelving on the ceiling to get some more storage. So I just kind of put in some ideas as I was walking through the house. Um, but I was live on there, but the video I had taken beforehand, if that makes sense. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to mention is I put a QR code up on my sign at the house, just in case anyone tried to go to the house, like a, a typical open house. So that would just redirect them back to my Facebook event. Well, that's cool. That, that's a yeah. good idea. Yeah. And where do you get your QR codes? It was created... One of them was created through KV Core, um, and then I think, I think even in Facebook, it allowed me to create a QR code for that event. Well, that's cool. Yeah. I don't know anything about QR codes and how to generate them. I learned recently that uh, I I've never really used them, but now on the phones, you just open your camera. Mm -hmm. and it focuses in on the QR code and it automatically takes you there. So right. pretty easy. Yeah, but how do you create it in the first place? I'm, I was learning on the go, on the fly, honestly. I think in the event, I'm like 95% sure, but I'm not sure if the event allowed you to generate a QR code or if you took the link from the event and just went to like a QR code creator. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I have a separate question, just out of curiosity of what the rest of you are doing, but just when you have a listing that has just been kind of stale for a while, um, you know, and, and the seller is not really super stoked about the idea of dropping the price at all, what, uh, what else have you guys, you know, had success with um, and kind of breathing some life back into it to, uh, to you know, get, get showings drum back up and, and that sort of stuff. Just be interested to see what you guys have had success with there. I'll throw a couple ideas out there. Um, I usually either go back and look at it myself or have another agent look at it and just make sure that there wasn't anything obvious missed, you know, like schools or... Um, you know, I'm usually pretty thorough with making sure all the boxes are checked, but just in case there's anything that we might be missing on how people are searching. Um, I've noticed that sometimes changing up the pictures, you know, your first picture um, gets more That's interest. Yeah. And then I've been going back and putting on Zillow the, um, I forget what it's called, but it's like the seller's favorite part of the house. Uh -huh. um, so those are kind of some extra things that I just make sure are completed. Gotcha. I'm really big on pictures. So 
<clears throat> if I'm not getting a lot of calls on a listing, my front, my first picture that I have on the MLS, I switch it up all the time. Because people go through and they're like, yeah, I've seen it, I've seen it. Right. But if you, even if it's part of your original, we have 32. If it's part of your original 32, I will put it at the front. But then we're lucky in Oregon that we can, um, our weather changes all the time. So if we took pictures in the rainy season, we can go back out and take pictures in the sun. And then um, I have a professional photographer, my husband, but we have drones and I'm really big on the drone in that um, I recently got a little one, a, a small mini Mavic. And it's as big as my hand, it looks like a bug, but it goes at least high enough to get a good front photo of the front of the house. It doesn't have to be all the way up in the air, but if it can at least get 10 feet or eight feet up above, you're looking at the house at a much prettier angle. Um, but I like switching up photos. And then um, throwing it on Craigslist and then just reviving it on Craigslist too. And when you put it on Craigslist, are you using, um, so like out of KV Core, you can just hit the button to put it on Craigslist and it generates the link and everything for it, um, you know, so that people could go. But do you have it to where when people click on that link, they have to then register or do you put a link out there that's like, go ahead and check it out, okay. You yeah, I just do it myself, I just do it clean myself to to um, craigslist gotcha i do it the other way you use the kv core well that's yeah. because ali you're you're using kv core you're you're getting really good at that i'm not yet i uh, i have yet to jump into kv core i do think i'd change it so they can at least look at a couple pictures before it makes them register okay yeah and then also i use the property boost on there as well so I, I think it's so. awesome. Property boost. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll have to look into that. On what? On where, where are you boosting it? Uh, through KB Core. Hmm. What do you pay for that? It just depends on how long you want to run it for. And I did it on two listings. I did it for three weeks a piece and it was, I think, $150. Mm -hmm. um, and then you, you can send daily reports to your seller so they can see how many views and clicks and stuff like that they're, they're getting. So it has some analytics behind it, which is nice. Um, and it like was pummeling tons of leads into uh, the KB core for me without me having to do anything. And now I have all these people who are actively in there. Some of them are just, you know, perusing and tire kicking, but you know, it's, it's just a way to stay in contact with them and, and it just automatically pilots to them if they start coming back. Mm -hmm. so, where does it boost your listing to uh instagram and facebook okay sarah it sounds like you and i need to learn kv core more yeah, i need to and learn I, KV core I do more. sounds like ally knows it yeah it's overwhelming not gonna lie <laughs> there's a lot there there's a lot that you can do yeah mm -hmm. i i do use it as a crm for all my new leads and stuff um but I haven't done squeeze pages or this property boost or any of that. Yeah. I, I, I get into part of it and then I get myself overwhelmed. So that <laughs> off. <laughs> well, that's why we're doing all this. We can all learn from each other yeah. and figure out yeah. ways to yeah. utilize it. Yeah. I think the, tra the training that they have on there that kind of breaks it down weekly is probably worthwhile and paces yourself. <laughs> If you haven't done that yet. I was just going to ask about that because there's the video series. Is that what you mean for training? Um, Is it Mind Flash? Like a, no, I think it's like an agent boot camp or something. I forget what it's called. Yeah, it they, have, they have a lot of stuff in there. Um, if you just go into their training little section on KV Core, there's all mm -hmm. sorts of videos and and actually a really good resource for the kv core training is um there's a facebook group that they have a, uh, it's like kv core mastermind or something like that 
Um, but they have a ton of, you know, different people all across the country who um, are using it, you know, to its fullest ability. Um, so there's always, you know, different people you could ask, talk to there and everything. And I've got a lot of my questions answered on there um, a lot faster than support's been able to get back to me. So, yeah, but those tweets pages are great. I mean, it, I think separately, I know we're supposed to be talking about listings and stuff, but just as a lead gen tool, the, um, I've had a lot of success with using those squeeze pages and just sending out, you know, here's my favorite properties, you know, between 250 and 350 um, in Grants Pass or, or whatever, and then targeting it to that area and everything. I've had a lot of good feedback from that. That's pretty um, cool. I might want to pick your brain on that one after. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you getting leads from that? Yeah. Um, they're not always, you know, the best quality, but what I do with those ones is, um, I just kind of put them into an automated campaign. Um, you know, so they come in and automatically they get enrolled in a 12 month campaign and it just kind of drip, drip, drip hits them. Mm -hmm. And then I'll, I'll get them to respond, uh, to something, you know, at some point usually, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, with those ones, I, I have it set to require mm -hmm. their phone number. And I know that there's kind of two different schools of thought there. Uh, but with the phone number, then I can at least start texting them too. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's been kind of, I feel like probably the most successful part of it is they'll at least respond to a text sometime down the road. It might be, you know, the eighth text they get from me, but um, I've had a lot more success with that than um, getting them to respond to an email or even a call usually. So, mm -hmm. So, so it kind sounds of, to me like we need to have um, get together, often get togethers with uh, all of us teaching each other something. Yeah, that would be great. Going back to our subject about um, what we're doing for listings. So on April 1st, I put a listing on <laughs> and in the state of Washington, which was complete shutdown, like you weren't supposed to go. So I, I took advantage of 360 tour, not through EXP, but through a different company and um, also had promotional videos done and those were pretty cool to like put on other platforms and then i had a tech person tell me how to take the 360 tour and actually do like a whole youtube video walkthrough telling them about nuances so people aren't just doing it themselves like they're getting a personally guided tour i personally haven't done it yet but i mean that on one of my next listings i certainly want to try and utilize that and so it's capturing them for a little longer and telling them about nuances, opening cupboards, you know, whatever, like, or pointing to something that you can't really see as well um, without, you know, knowing that it's there. You know, like I had a, this particular listing had built in um, Bose system speakers and, you know, pointing up at those into this promotional video helped point out the little nuances that somebody would just pass on by. And that was super helpful. And then the yeah. photographer I use also has analytics behind their websites. And I get two different websites, one that's branded and one that's unbranded. So it was great to have the property booth sending information over to my sellers so they know what's happening online with the property booth portion of it. And then they also can see the analytics of how many people are looking at the websites and stuff like that as well. So it's at least feeding them information and they're being able to understand that at least it's getting views and it's not just, you know, it wasn't just COVID, yeah. I mean, keeping, th keeping things down. Yeah. Because you can see where people start, lo you lose people on certain images and maybe then you can rip out that image and make sure, you know, you don't lose people on it. Like, oh, a bathroom shot, not that exciting. I'll move on. <laughs> yeah, I try not to take bathroom shots because, I mean, you only have 32 pictures, so why waste it? Unless, unless it's a beautiful bathroom. But if it's just your standard, toilet in a sink, I'm not going to waste a photo on that. Yeah, I think right now that we kind of have to show everything because like for myself, I've been out this week quite a bit with um, some buyers and a lot of these homes did not have video, let alone photos. And one thing that was really important to this particular buyer is like they have little kids and they're like, I never have a bathtub. And, you know, going back and things like it would have kept us from looking at a couple different houses in that capacity. So it, it would have saved me time in my exposure. Makes sense. Yeah, all that makes stuff. Sense. So, you know, if, if you're going to show a house, show everything, the good, the bad, the ugly. I mean, let's just get it all out there for them. So people can either pick a pony or um, 
move on. So do you guys do 360 tours? Mm -hmm. I do. A I lot do. of them? No. I was kind of curious on some of that. Trying been, been trying to figure out something. That's I shared, you know, I went out last week and a buyer had asked us to, it wasn't our listing, it was somebody else's listing and they wanted to see it, but they were from out of town. And so I said, well, yeah, I'll make an appointment. I'll go, to, you know, I'll go video the home as long as the seller's okay with that. So they allowed me to do that, but then to upload it to YouTube, it took an hour and a half for it to upload to YouTube. And I'm like, okay, there's gotta be a smarter way of working here. So I didn't know you guys do anything like that. And if you do, is there some other program that's easier for doing things like that? I know for me, I've gone out and taken video for people, but I don't load it up to YouTube if it's not my listing. Well, I wasn't, I just wasn't sure. I ended up doing it to YouTube and just did it as a, as a private. So no one can search for it or anything. And I just sent her the link to it herself. But it was the part that I didn't know if I could actually send that big of a video mm -hmm. email, you know, or, you know, I knew I couldn't do it just through text messaging because it'd be too long, but I didn't know if I could do it through email at all. How are you? I usually upload it into YouTube and send the link. <clears throat> you could do it through, oh, sorry, go ahead, sorry. No, me too. I, I put it on YouTube because I can't figure out any other way to send a, a big video. You can upload a big video to Google Docs. Um, I've done that before, and I think it actually, I may have had to do it into a couple of videos. Um, but if you upload it to Google Docs, you can then send that shareable link. Um, and that works too, but that kind of bypasses YouTube. Yeah, mine just creates a link in my phone and I can email that, text it, whatever. And then they can, okay. you can give share Tracy, what are you using? Are you using your phone? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. And are you uploading it from your phone to your computer to YouTube? Yep. So no, sometimes. I yes, I did do it that way. So sometimes I will just do it from my phone to YouTube. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a quicker way to do it. Yeah. I try and limit my, my walkthroughs to 10 minutes and under. Yeah, and I think that was probably about what I was at, was right in that 10 to 12 minutes. And your other question about 3D tours, I do, I, I use iSpy360 and I do have a camera. Mm -hmm. I should have it right here in front of me, but <laughs> I don't know where it is. Um, I have a Ricoh camera, really tiny. Um, wait a minute, I do, right here, sorry. No, I don't know where it is. Um, sorry. So <clears throat> it's super easy to use and it's $34 a month and I can upload 10 properties per month. The issue I'm running into right now in my area is, or my, my homes, you can see everything on those 360 cameras so people can look all around the room and if they're not in that room to look around and see what else is there sometimes it's a detriment so i haven't used it in a long time actually because we'll take good photos and we'll take accurate photos but um, sometimes that 360 camera just doesn't do a good job on the homes that I'm listing. Now, if I had top end homes, I'd be using it all the time. But, but I mean, it's really easy to use and it can be worth it if you're, if you're listing, if your homes are nice out in your area, yeah. it, it's a good investment. <laughs> yeah, see, my, mine aren't. Good. I can't say that. We're, I mean, we, we have nice homes in the area, but you know, most of our, for Hermiston, you know, if you guys don't know us very well, I mean, Hermiston's population is about 28,000 and our median home price is 218,000. Yeah, and that's about where I'm at too. Yeah. yeah. So how many units did you have to do, Tracy, to get to Icon? 50. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> nice work. And that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's great. That's, I wish I was in an area that had a little bit higher end. It would make things a little bit easier, but we're not. Yeah, I know my average was like just under 300 uh, last year. That's, I, that was, I thought, low. But um, yeah, anyways. 
Yeah. And, and for Hermiston, you know, just like a lot of you guys, we're, we're on a very high end. Hermiston, we sit in this hub right now where we've got I-84 and I-82 that we're right smack dab in the middle of it. So we have a lot of growth. Amazon is our big growth right now with all of their um, data centers. So I think they have a plan of about 40 data centers that they're building here. Um, so they have, been, they have enough land for what I've been hearing about 10 more years. So we still plan to see quite a bit of people coming in. Plus we have the army depot. And so they've got some plans for that. And if that ever gets to happen, then we should be doing another takeoff, which would be great. So what I hear is good time to buy an investment property in Hermiston. It is. <laughs> yeah, if you can find it. <laughs> yeah, we have, we have so many people that are moving to the area. We have no houses for inventory, but then we also have no, no rentals. I mean, the, the line, the wait list for rentals is astronomical. And, you know, I seen somebody post on Facebook, a two bedroom, one bath, little home, and it's a thousand dollars a month. And it's just crazy. How far are you from Condon? Um, actually, it's only about an hour away. Okay. Yeah. They're, they're kind of southwest to me. I have another just random other change topic conversation, if that's okay. But um, how much of your guys' efforts, like when you're promoting a listing, how much of your effort is spent promoting it to um, – like the general public buyers, you know, uh, versus trying to promote it to other agents. So like, for example, if you're putting it on, on social media, are you targeting, um, just home buyers or are you targeting realtors or both? I'm primarily targeting 100% to the buyers. Um, you know, our area, we don't really have anything to market to except for Facebook. Um, so there really are no print publications, you know, things like that. We've got one publication that is a print that comes out once a month, but it, by the time it comes out from the deadline to turn your stuff in to when it comes out, it's, you know, everything's pretty much gone by then, but most of it's primarily right on Facebook and I'm advertising, you know, to the classified groups and things like that. So it's primarily buyers that I'm peaking interest to whether they're buyers who are new and not working with a realtor to where they're calling us, you know, to look at it, or if they're calling their realtor that they're currently working with is typically how that's working on our end. If we have listings, um, uh, particularly listings that you know, if they've come back on the market or like you were talking earlier, Brian, you know, kind of what do you do to promote a listing that's been sitting there for a while? I will do up a flyer and send that off to the agents because I think after a while, even agents kind of forget that a home is still available. Mm -hmm. so we'll use that in that route too. Gotcha. Um, I'm mostly to my sphere on Facebook. So I will, upload it on my business page, and then I'll share it to my personal page. Um, if it's stale, like Tracy was saying, then I'll promote it to other agents. I mean, we all, well, I'm in a small town too, <clears throat> and we all know what everybody has listed. But during this time, I, I thought it would be good to do a Facebook Live for agents, and I haven't done that yet. Um, but I was thinking, you know how we do it personally, where we have other agents come into our listings and we have, um, we'll have drawings in our area. Like if you go to, we'll have four agents put up four houses <clears throat> and you have to get your business card punched at each one. And at the last one, they leave their card and we'll have a drawing. So I thought we could do that virtually and still have a drawing but that would be a good way to put it in front of the face of other agents. Mm -hmm. I mostly um, advertise to my sphere. Um, Tracy though, there, there are agents in my area that do go on to the Facebook pages of the community mm -hmm. and that seems to work really well for them. So that is a good idea to do that. It has. Uh, I've seen a lot of, I mean, I've discovered a lot of like listings for my buyers where I've just been, you know, sitting at night, watch, you know, scrolling through Facebook and somebody's sponsored post will pop up of the new listing that they had. And I'm like, oh, hey, you know, and then buyer 
pops into my mind or I'm going to show them this. So I just wondered, I've started to do that for some of mine where I'll specifically target it at other realtors um, or people who are, you know, because you can pick job title as a, uh, as a target um, in Facebook. So I've done that, but it's, it's not something that I don't, I don't think you'll ever know if um, it's working or not, but it's just, you know, something I've tried doing recently. Um, and Sarah, it looked like you were trying to say something earlier, but you're. Oh, oh I was just going to say, I, I don't think I ever um, market to agents, my listings. Um, they, I, because probably because I don't like getting their marketing. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I feel like they're going to see it in RMLS if everybody's setting up their searches and watching the searches. Um, I, when I set up a search for a, a buyer in RMLS, I CC myself. And actually that's how I start every day is by looking through those emails to see um, what's new. And if there's a great looking house, I think the buyer um, would be great for the buyer. I text it to him immediately. So anyway, I kind of approach it all that way. I don't, I don't uh, work on getting it out to agents other than RMLS. So Sarah, you don't use the Portland Realtors Facebook group? To advertise my listings, no. Mm -mm. Yeah. See, I think that's a good thing to have. Like, uh, So for those who are not up here in the RMLS, we have um, a Facebook group for Portland Realtors. We have a haves and wants, and you know, mm -hmm. we can share things, you know, what everybody's looking for. And I think it's cool. So um, mm -hmm. I often find things on there that I'm looking for for clients and we'll share it off to them like, hey, this is coming up or go check this out before, you know, finding it even in the RMLS. So sometimes it'll go in there before it's in the MLS. The only thing I look out on the, on, oh, the only thing I look out in those Facebook groups, which somehow people are still posting or coming soon in the coming soon Facebook. I don't know how they're doing that because I, I'm pretty sure they don't have, you know, an agreement for that or it's in MLS is coming soon. But well, I mean, if it's coming soon the same day, it doesn't really. Yeah, I'm not sure when, when it's coming, but I watch those. So I've had two, uh, two deals so far this year where I've seen, seen them on Facebook as, hey, I've got this new listing coming up, and I've had a buyer, and we've gotten a, an offer in and everything before it ever even went live. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's what I, I guess that's what I'm trying to, to get at. It's like, is anybody else actually – intentionally trying to do that with your own listings and trying to get it out there in front of other agents. Like, Hey, this is upcoming or Hey, this is, you know, a good one, but not necessarily like I agree with, um, I think it was Sarah, you were saying you don't like getting all the, uh, the marketing mm -hmm. from other agents. I don't either, <laughs> but yeah. what I'm, what I'm talking about is like targeting it on social media so that it's just as they're scrolling through their Facebook page or feed or whatever, they'll see oh. that pop up. So, mm -hmm. but not specifically like, hey, Mr. Realtor, do you want to check out my listing? So, mm -hmm. well, I put them, I do put my listings usually on my Facebook business page and share it to my personal, like Teresa was saying. Mm -hmm. And I have so many agent friends on there. I guess they see them there, but I don't um, choose them as an audience if I boost or, or run an ad or anything. Gotcha. Yeah. I, I, I don't either. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Sarah. I don't advertise. I don't contact other agents because like you said, you know, if they have a buyer, they're looking in the MLS. They're looking for the properties. I don't need to reach out to them because they're going to find me. So I don't waste my time with other agents. I don't either. <laughs> yeah. One of the kind of going back on the listing, something that I thought of too, Brian, was um, when I have listings that, you know, I know are coming or, you know, they've kind of been sitting there a little bit too, is I really stay connected with the local lenders that we've got around here. Um, you know, and I'll, I'll basically touch base with them and say, Hey, you know, I know you're pre-approving people, you know, here's what, you know, just hit the market today. I've got this three bedroom, two bedroom, 220,000, you know, whatever. And do you have any buyers? And a lot of times, you know, I've had them say, hey, yeah, I know so-and-so is working with this person. And so they'll contact that, you know, that buyer and let them know that, you know, hey, Tracy, she's got this house at this address type of a deal. So that's a 
that's another way of at least keeping some of that communication open with the lenders because they are the ones who are, you know, they want they want to make that closed sale too because then they get paid also. <laughs> yeah. That is super smart, Tracy. That is that, a I, great idea. I love that. Instead of all these zip, what are they called? Zip flyers that we get yeah. in our emails. We should be sending our listings to lenders, not realtors. My gosh, that's a great nugget. It's worked really well. There's been a couple of different times where, you know, they, they get right on to, you know, whichever agent they know that that buyer of theirs is working with. And typically we can get them all done up. So, but yeah. I actually had one just go pending this week. Um, I list HUD properties and uh, I was talking to the local lender about this particular property and um, we were just chit-chatting about what it's going to take, what type of loan, rehab loan, mm -hmm. and then um, got an offer, but the type of loan that they were pre-approved for, I, I don't have a buyer, another agent does wrong kind of loan so I was able to let that other agent know hey go to that lender she already knows about this property so they did they boomerang to that lender and she was able to get them pre-approved because she and I had already talked about my listing so that's awesome how about you Allie oh. yes uh um, I think I only put it out there for agents when it's in the coming soon, uh, just in within the Facebook group. Um, I don't like getting the emails either. So uh, we don't have any um, agent tours here. So I like Teresa's idea about, I don't know, I guess it takes time to coordinate all of that. But um, I remember there used to be agent tours. <laughs> and I don't go on very many of them because I mean, oftentimes it's, if I have a buyer, I'm looking at the properties. I don't need to go pre-look at properties if I don't have buyers. Um, Allie, one thing that you do do that's very enticing is Allie will put it on Facebook with a pineapple and she'll put uh, something, she entices you, she says something's coming up soon. And she doesn't say where, she doesn't say um, the address or any of that, but she does entice people to know something's coming on the market. And her pineapple is her signature, and I love that. Mm -hmm. It's cute. Yeah. How many of you post, um, when you put something, a new listing on Facebook and you're advertising it, how many of you put the price in the details or do you not put the price? Mm -hmm. I, I tried not to, thinking, you know, that'll make them go to the, you know, click the link and the info, you know, type of a deal. But I had more people on Facebook that were just like, what's the price? And why are we withholding the price? And you must be trying to hide something. So I started putting the prices. <laughs> I do too, but I just, I've seen others not do it. So I've always just wondered kind of what the, the school of thought there is. I do because I don't want people that aren't in that price range calling me. Yeah, um, that bugs me tremendously it bugs, when the price it bugs isn't me there. Mm -hmm. I will post when I have a new listing, I'll put it on Facebook and I will put all the photos. I will put the verbiage exactly that's in the MLS. I'll just copy and paste it and I'll put for sale. I'll put the price. I'll put the address and I'll put contact me. And that goes out to my friends who hopefully have big mouths and tell their friends. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of times I've even started putting the type of financing that is available for that specific home too. Mm -hmm. Just because of the fact that we, we can, you know, particularly we get a lot of first time home care. They're looking at homes, you know, if we get a lot of them who are pre-approved for like 150, 180,000. And we just don't have any homes. I mean, it's really sad when we're saying we want a livable home priced, you know, at least 200 type of a deal. Um, and so I've started putting a lot of the, you know, cash only type, you know, putting that into that listing part too, because of that fact of like you were saying, Teresa, having so many people call thinking that it can go for FHA when it'll only go for cash or conventional type of a deal.
No. Are you muted, Jennifer? I am. My other half just came in and I was telling him to be quiet. <laughs> uh oh. Hi, other half. He's waving at me. That's why I was waving back at him. <laughs> I wasn't waving at you guys, I swear. <laughs> well, I've got my dog in the background snoring, if you guys can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Allie, I, I'm sorry, I missed what market you're in. Could you repeat it? Uh, Salem. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. You're not that far. No. We need a Anybody KB else? Core. We need a oh, little KB ahead. Core Zoom meeting with Allie. Liz has been doing classes. Have anyone attended those? I trust yes, you. She's a fabulous teacher. She's really yeah. good at what she does. Right. So one thing I want to add in, I know this is not our topic, but I was really frustrated with KB Core at the beginning. And I think it was because all of these messages were going out and it didn't always match up where I was in conversation mm -hmm. with someone. And so I just went in and I edited everything to say Allie's assistant because it's a lot easier to say, oh, my assistant was just checking in. And it made me feel better. <laughs> so, I don't know if that would help anyone, but um, I don't know. No, it's I a little bit easier cool. to navigate. Yeah. Good idea. Great idea. <laughs> Do you actually have an assistant? <laughs> Well, if it's coming from the KV Core number, I do. <laughs> no. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. My computer oh. made it didn't go dead on me. <laughs> Brian, are oh, you no. doing anything specific in your market for how you're doing listings? Because it sounded like you were going out and touring some ranches and those kind of things earlier in our pre-conversation. Um, sorry, what was your question? Oh, what, what are you doing different in your area since you're a little bit more in the rural aspects of things, it sounds like? Yeah, so I mean, for promoting listings and stuff, um, a lot of what I've been doing is just kind of social media, really, like that's kind of in the center of what I have tried doing for promotion. And I've, you know, done the kind of two-headed idea of pushing it towards realtors uh, and pushing it towards um, buyers and you know it, it's been pretty good I guess the responses that I've been getting but it's hard to say um, how good you know like I think slowings are, or sorry uh, showings have slowed down quite a bit for especially in the higher end of the houses like I have one that's uh, 675 and it's you know for us that's pretty high end but it's uh, been super slow you know, but then I had another one that was 350 and it sold in 10 days. And it's like, I've been doing the same marketing on both. And so it's like kind of frustrating, of, you know, I don't know, trying to solve that problem of like, how do I get more, you know, people wanting to tour that higher end home. Um, so I don't know if those people are just sitting out waiting on the sidelines until this all blows over or what, but that's kind of what I'm doing. It's just trying to get it out there, get as much exposure as possible. Does anybody do any paper advertising for their listings? Do you do flyers, postcards, uh, newspapers, any of that anymore? I think I make about 10 flyers and leave them at the house because nobody takes those anymore. And I was having a conversation with a, an agent I brought in uh, to EXP and she's like, do you do postcards anymore? I was like, no. I was like, if I get one, I'm annoyed by it. And it's like, it's just a waste of paper unless you're dealing with like an older clientele who's tech savvy or, you know, on social media, I think that's the only time it's really advantageous personally. So I tried something new with, I still put flyers out because I feel like it doesn't hurt anything. I didn't for a while, but I've started to now, but once the house goes under contract, I'll put, um, it's not squeeze page. It is, basically you run a search within your MLS, you know, like if it's three to 350, if that's what the house is listed in that range, then I'll set up a, a link where it's like, sorry, this house is already pending, but here's a list of other uh, similar homes. And then you can, yeah, you can set it up with a hashtag. So anyone that 
um, you know, goes to that link, you know that it came off of that listing. Um, so that's been just something I've started doing recently. You do that as a squeeze page? Not a squeeze page. I think it's just as a, um, a search. Uh, like you set up a search within the, uh, what is it called? The text to number. You know, you can set up a search within the MLS. You can set up the parameters. And, and is that through text KV, to certain. Through KV Core is what you're talking about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then if they text a certain number, like you could do like West Salem 350 or something, and it would set up that certain search for them. I'm lost. I don't know what, what you're using. To okay. Do that. Are, you, are, you thinking, are you talking landing page there, Allie? It's, um, no. So under the marketing tab in KV Core, I'm not looking at it, so that probably doesn't help. I, but I can, have that, yep. Okay, so I think it's something like, um, it's where you would set up a text to number. You know, you could set up different text codes. Okay. Mm, Pop capture? Possibly. Hey, can you guys all guess? <laughs> <laughs> and are you putting that on a fire and doing that or you're you started talking about flyers so do you create a flyer that says hey you missed out on this house but here here's a number you can text that will give you more opportunities right like so once the house goes under contract instead of pulling the flyer box i'll either like <laughs> laminate it so it's just that one page in there or print off new flyers with that link. Hmm. Were you able to find the spot in KV Core that I'm not doing the best job explaining? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Brian's right. I think what you're talking about might be under that call capture. And it, sa it says use your smart number for smart advertising. Yeah, and you could set up a different text to code. Yeah, that's it. Because you can, I've, I've used that in the past where you could um, put on there like text Brian to 111, whatever the number, you know, um, and then they text it and it'll text them back with a link to, I had it with a link to the app and then they could download it, but you could do it with a link to something else. So whether that be a list of homes or, or whatever. But yeah, that's, that, that is what it is, the, um, whatever I just said it's called. <laughs> Call capture, I think. Call capture, there we go. <laughs> yeah. I started doing it at open houses just because I was trying to give something else of value if they weren't interested in that property. That was back in the day when we could have open houses. Um, so I would just set up a, it, basically it's like a pre-saved search where you could just easily direct them to that. Hmm. To look into that. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Well, we're coming up on the hour, you guys. Does anybody have a last minute um, idea for those that are watching us? Um, how to boost their listing, help sell their listing? Um, maybe we all should come up with one last idea. I want to be I last. I have a question. Has anyone used their seller to give a tour to someone else? Yes. No. My sellers were willing to be face to face with buyers. I was not. You weren't involved in the call. Um, well, okay. I've had two actually recently. Okay. <laughs> One of them was physical. I was at the property, but I stood outside and my sellers gave the grand tour all of them unmasked uh went through the house and everybody loved each other we actually are closing next week on the sale um so it worked um but i stayed out of it and then another one um i had the buyer and the tenant did a facetime with the buyer and walked through the house wow the tenant was lovely the buyer made an offer um, contingent on her personally walking through the house. Once she got to the house, she said, 
Um, the walkthrough looked bigger. Um, it's too small for me, so she backed out of the deal. But yeah, so I've had two in the last couple of weeks. And so you weren't involved in the call on the second one that you were mentioning? No, so yeah, it was weird because um, I didn't know what the tenant would say. Right. Um, I think maybe in hindsight, maybe I should have been standing next to or do a three way. I don't know if you can do a three way on. I would Zoom it next time, actually. Mm. Now that I know how to do Zoom, I think that would be our best bet is to, because I did that today. I did a walkthrough today on Zoom by myself. But I, I just sent the link real easy to the other people. Super yeah. simple. Yeah. So I think that would make a better sense to be involved in the next walkthrough like that. Any of you guys using Bomb Bomb? I was thinking they had a way of being able to do where you could have your phone and you could tour. I got to look into that. Basically where you were able to give a tour while you were videoing. And I've been needing to it look and keep forgetting. It does create a link pretty easily. I don't know if there's a time limit on it though. Gotcha. I don't think I've done more than a minute in Bomb Bomb, but it does create, um, you know, like a link to that video pretty easily where you could text it. Yeah. That's okay. a good idea to try. I, I know I've, I've done a couple, well, I just did the other day because, you know, everybody's question right now is, well, what's the housing market really doing? You know, I bet it's really slow. And I went in and did a Bomb Bomb video that just shared that, you know, for our area, it, it really isn't slow. It's holding quite steady for us. I don't know about you guys, but very steady for us. You know, and we had had, you know, in seven days, 12 listings that were just single family homes. And then we had 16 that went pending. And I, you know, I got to share that seeing those pendings, that's really important because it's not just homes coming on the market and sitting there. It's homes coming on the market that people are, you know, buyers are making offers on. So, um, but I know I did that just from, sitting here at the house making that. I haven't done one on the go yet. So I was kind of curious. I thought I'd heard that you could do something to that, but so I'll have to do some checking on that, guys. I would say my last, you know, great idea is, I don't know if you call it a great idea, but last bit of advice is just the, what I already kind of said is the Adobe Spark. I think that that's something that is a really cool tool that I don't think a lot of people know about. Um, it's super easy to use. It's free uh, and you could upload pictures, um, videos and everything to it and, and then kind of create like a little, a longer video with little clips and everything and it's uh, to music and you can insert slides with information about the home and do a cool little, you know, couple minute video that way and um, I think it's, a, it's neat. I, I was happy to have found it. So I would definitely suggest checking it out um, and I think you'll probably like it. What's it called? Adobe Spark. Mm. Mm -hmm. okay. I did write that down. I'm going to look into that. Thank you. It's, it's cool. Super simple and uh, nice and easy. And the price is great. I don't know that I have any uh, great um, remedies when a house has been sitting. Um, I mean, in this right now with what's going on, of course, it's expected, even though houses are selling pretty quickly, there's others that do sit that should have sold, um, but because of what's going on. So we're, we just are patient on those um, other homes. I'm pretty conservative on pricing and I'm, I feel like I, I price homes pretty spot on. Um, so if it's sitting, then, um, you know, I feel like we came in right where we should be and it's obviously time to reduce. <laughs> it's, I mean, I don't know any other trick around it um, to generate interest back at the house. And then of course, once it's reduced, uh, throw a bunch of more marketing at it and an open house and, um, you know, start your marketing kind of all over again is the way I've done it. I'll go Yep. So my last word would be, I like moving photos around. I like taking new photos. So as the seasons change, I mean, change it up. 
people get tired of looking at the same old photos or the same front photo. So I, my advice is change up your photos, make sure you get nice photos. Um, if you can get drone photos, I think when we're out of the box, if we can get photos that are different than everybody else in the area, I think that helps sell the property. I also think it helps bring more sellers to you because you're thinking out of the box. I would say utilize the 360 tour. I thought that was amazing for two houses that I had listed that recently that were under lockdown, like nobody could go see houses in the state of Washington and both of them went pending based on those. So it was pretty cool. Um, and I had some promotional video, which was another aspect to add into it. And I, that had drone and stuff like that as well. And I think that's also key, which a lot of other agents are not doing a, the 360 or any drone with the promotional video, and I'm happy to send you guys a link of the company that I used. I mean, it was really cool what they did um, to put something out there and just have something that will have some longevity uh, for their business as well as for mine. I'd love that, Jennifer. So Me too. Once we finish this recording, can you go ahead and send that to us? Yeah, Thanks. I will. I think I'll probably just go back to, you know, Keeping in touch with, you know, we were talking with Brian and stuff, you know, even, even your local realtors, sometimes they'll forget things, keep in touch with them, you know, um, but then also, like I said, for me, probably that big aha sometimes with your listings is, you know, touching base, sending a flyer, short email or something to the local lenders in your area who are working with the buyers and see, you know, who they might have and tell them to send it along to their buyer or to the realtor that they know that buyer is working with. I guess I'll add in, be creative with social media. So if you, if your seller is on social media, ask if it's okay to post on their page. If you know neighbors in the neighborhood, um, you know, sometimes I post on there and say, do you know anyone that you'd like to have as a neighbor? Um, I think just the more energy you put out there with making an effort on advertising, um, I don't know, that's usually what I end up doing. Just think outside the box a little bit and treat it like it was your own house that you were trying to sell. 